John 15, 1 to 8, that we're going to focus on. John is a good book altogether. John 14, 12, it says, you can do greater things than I can do. And I'm going to send you a comforter. It flies right through, right to verse chapter 15, chapter 16. It talks about how the Holy Spirit is going to operate in our life, basically. It's talking it over and over again. Jesus is just repeating himself about the Holy Spirit and what the Holy Spirit will be for us, the comforter. And I was listening to the message. I started with chapter 14. I listened to chapter 15. And, and the whole line is about Jesus Christ. The power of the Holy Spirit coming to be our comforter. The whole, and, and it's to teach us. He's going this angle, then he's going this angle. And he said, do you get it yet? <laughs> do you get that you got the power to do all things? Do you get it yet? And he kind of, I mean, I'm paraphrasing, but I, I see it in there. He's saying, I think he just has to, okay, you didn't get it. I'm going to have to explain it again now. One more time, here it goes. And then chapter 16, okay, again, here we go. This is what it's like. Um, sometimes we have to be told so many times to grab a hold of his revelation, don't we? We are stubborn people. Human nature is just stubborn. And we need to grab a hold of it and say, okay, I'm getting rid of that stubbornness out of my heart and so I can see Jesus in my heart, amen? And so in verse 1, I'm going to talk about the vine a little bit. I am the true vine. This is Jesus talking. I am the true vine, and my father is the vine dresser, which means the tiller of the soil. It means somebody that takes care of the, of the vineyard, somebody that takes care of the, the fruit and, and all that stuff that needs to be taken care of. God is that place for us. And then he goes on and says, but I'm going to focus on that first verse for one second. He says, I am. How many know when Jesus died on the cross and rose again, he says that you are my body. How many know that? Anybody here? How many know that Jesus says, I'm the head and you're my body? How many know that? Would you, am, I, am I telling you the truth here? Yes? Yeah? Okay. So if, if I am part of the body of Christ, that means I'm part of the I am. If, if I'm part of the body of Christ, I'm part of the I am. It means that I have the strength of Jesus in me no matter where I am. I am is like a magnet. When Jesus says, I am, it's like a magnet. Everything comes and gravitates to it in order and authority. It, it's something that just draws the presence of God to you when you know that you are part of the I am. And Jesus says, I am the vine. I'm the true vine. And the Father's the, the person that tills my soil. The Father's the vine dresser. And it says in verse 2, Every branch in me which does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch which bears fruit, he prunes so that it may bear more fruit. And so when I look at this and says, okay, he's every branch that is in me that does not bear fruit, every branch that becomes religious, every branch that becomes a place, if it doesn't bear fruit, that branch doesn't have power to do things no more. It doesn't have power to move forward no more. There's, we need to wake up because you can be engrafted again to the presence of God again. We need to get out of that place, of, of that still place. And one thing about a vine, you have to understand, you can engraft it, but you cannot let it be without the vine for too long. There's Christians today, there's people here today, they plant their stuff in the vineyard, which is churches, okay? And God's body and his family, would you agree? They plant it there, and it just barely starts rooting, and then they unroot that and put it in a bag and soak it in the water. People come in with the Holy Ghost power, and they go in this place of saying, okay, I am divine, and I'm going to root in, and hallelujah, we're going to have a good time here. I, I, we finally found the church. We finally found the body of Christ. We finally found something. Then we move out of there, and we pull ourselves. Say, okay, I want to, I want to transplant myself. I want to engraft into that place. And then we put ourselves in water, but what happens is that people, water represents the Holy Spirit, so people think that they're soaking in the Holy Spirit, which they are, but you're not rooting in Christ Jesus. So they're soaking in the presence. Oh, it feels good. But you can't do nothing. You can't bear, bear fruit when you're soaking. You can't bear fruit when you're soaking. You can only nourish yourself when you're soaking. You can only get ready to be planted when you're soaking. You can only, that's when you soak in the presence of the Holy Spirit, it prepares you to root deeper, to do greater things, to do, have greater fruit. Amen? And so too many, I, we have too many Christians in a bag, sitting there with their 
roots with water. Holy Ghost, oh, I feel good. And they do feel good. I'm telling you, that Holy Spirit feels good when you soak in it. I'm telling you. You feel drunk. You feel everything. You feel the presence of God. You feel, you feel the presence. But you're never, ever rooted, so you can't bear fruit. So you're born again believer. You're, you're enjoying the presence of God or the Holy Spirit. But we don't see fruit, right? Because we don't. I, I want to. Don't shut down on me. This is going to be so exciting, okay? Some of you say, well, I don't want to go to church. Well, <laughs> that's your problem. I'm not going to talk to you about that. I'm talking about the Word of God right now, okay? So just wake up because there's going to be something here for you, okay? And it says, I take it away. <laughs> but every branch that bears fruit, he prunes so that it can bear more. So if you bear fruit, you are going to get pruned. Basically, if you bear fruit, you're going to get chopped. <laughs> you, you're going you're gonna to lose everything you had, and then you're going to start again. You might not lose everything you had because you had a harvest with the fruit, but you have to prune to gain more. And so what this word prune, I was really excited when I looked at it, is to cleanse from filth and period, impurities. It is to, that word actually in the Greek is preferring to, when he, Jesus is talking about prunes, he, pruning your tree here, he's saying, not prunes, <laughs> That helps you grow a bathroom, but I'm talking about the Holy Spirit. <laughs> but <laughs> we've got to walk in this. Come on, we're having fun here. Like, wake up. Let's have, let's have the presence of God here. When I was reading that at first, I, I read it as prunes. It does not say that. It says prune. The chip, chip, chop, that kind of stuff. And it's to clear the impurities of your life. And it's actually there to take the filth, and it's also to, to, you, to remove the useless shoots. 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 You know what I mean, right? I'm not saying shoot me. <laughs> shoots. To remove the useless shoots. Because there are useless stuff that we do that is not bearing fruit sometimes. And we need to remove the things from us that isn't being fruitful. So we have this idea, which we most people call religious or religiosity, so I call it that for that reason, because people can relate to it. But it, it's called religiosity, so we do something for the sake of doing it. It might have bared fruit 10 years ago, but it's not bearing fruit today. Why is it not bearing fruit today? It's because you never pruned it. I'm going to tell you how and why. And, but it's also, in a spiritual sense, that pruning is a place of removing guilt and also to remove from the sin or wrongdoing to make amends of. Because when you walk and you bear fruit, and the bearing fruit, there is thistles involved, there's all kinds of things involved, there's haywire involved, but the fruit, when it's removed, there has to be pruning. And I'm going to talk about it because there is a powerful thing. And I'm going to talk about the vine in depth today. And I'm going to talk and, and represent, and I'm going to ex represent the grapevine to us as Christians, okay? And I found this exciting information that I've been studying on ever since I had that word about cluster level. How many of you heard that word? You heard a cluster level. And when I read that, we need to get ready for this. I said, okay, God, if that's a word from you, how do I get that? How do I war to that prophecy? How many of you want to war with me? How many of you want to see cluster level? This is the word to get cluster level, I'm telling you. This is something new for you to go to the next level in your life that you've never been in. This is a fresh word. If you've been sitting there, I can guarantee you, this church, the people of this ministry, you've been pruned already. Don't worry about pruning right now. Worry about bearing fruit right now. Worry about growing your vine, not whining. Start growing because the people that have been of this church, that have been here and been delivered from many things, you've been pruned. That's why you're not feeling good because you don't see the fruit. But watched when the fruit comes in. Amen? But we've got to look in a process because this is a lifelong process is pruning and growing, pruning and growing. It is something that we're created to do. And it's not evil. It's a good thing. Amen? It's, it is a good thing. Then verse 3 says, for, he says, this is encouraging. Jesus says, this, you already are clean. You are already clean because of the words I have spoken to you. Whew, praise God. How do you get pruned? It's by being under the Word of God. You are clean because you're constantly taking the Word of God and you're taking the conviction. Every time you take conviction and you change something in your life, you're pruning. You are already clean because you choose to be a part of something that changes your life. Amen? That's why, in this place, you're being pruned. Almost every Wednesday and every Sunday that you come, or if you just come Sundays, whatever, you're getting pruned every time you're getting a bad branch taken off of you. 
Because we have a conviction in our heart, right? Would you agree? And when that conviction in our heart, that word pruned us and cleaned us because it chose, we chose to act upon the word of God. Amen? Amen? That's exciting to me. When I got this revelation really this week, and I looked at this, and I said, wow, God, I'm going to go to church maybe five times a week. <laughs> but I'm the preacher, and if I can't preach, nobody doesn't, you know, whatever. But I am in a way, because I listen to messages online, or I go wherever I can, and I listen to these things, and it prunes me. It makes me want to change, and it makes me want to do things better than I ever have. It wants, me, it wants to make me move forward in the anointing. It wants me to do things I prune because of the word. Amen? I get convicted, and I repent, or I change, or I remove something from my life so I can move forward in my life so I can bear fruit. Amen? Isn't that exciting? We get to do that every day. We have technology today. We just Google. T.D. Jakes. Ooh, I love him. Or and Jesse Duplantis. Or whatever you need pruning from. Maybe you need to, need to get some sadness pruned. Well, then watch Jesse Duplantis. <laughs> if you want to be told straight, then maybe we need to watch T.D. Jakes. But... There's different ways and different anointings that are out there that prunes different things from our life. Will you not agree? And this word of God that prunes us. And he says, you're already clean because of the word that I have spoken to you. Because you listen to the word of God. You listen to the revelational knowledge of God. You, you, you listen to that in Jesus' name. And it's going to change your life today. Your life is going to be changed. You have no choice. You say, well, I don't, know, I don't like what you're preaching. I don't even know if I like you. It doesn't matter. The word of God is alive no matter if you like me or not. Amen? It doesn't matter. I win either way because I'm just being obedient to God. And when I'm being obedient to Jesus Christ, he's going to change your life. Maybe, you got, maybe people are going to run out of here or watch this video and say, man, I, I get, but guess what? It's going to stick in your head until you do something about it. I have that kind of effect to people sometimes. When we preach in the anointing, it sticks to your head. Amen? You want to change. He says, wow, I love it. I'm clean because I'm, I'm being obedient by listening. He says, verse 4, abide in me and I... I and I and you, just as a branch cannot bear fruit with, on its own. Whenever you're on your own, you're not going to bear fruit. A vine, a grapevine, cannot bear fruit on its own. It cannot. It needs more to fertilize it and so forth. So I'm going to talk about it more. I love getting ahead of myself. I'm so excited about it. I'm very excited about what God is doing in our life because when I'm finally getting to grab a hold of why he's talking about us as vines, as us as the branches. Amen? And he goes on and says, Abide in me, and I in you, just as the branch cannot bear fruit on its own unless it abides in the vine. So neither can you unless you abide in me. So if you think for one second, if I think for one second, if I can do it without the presence of Jesus, without the presence of his body, without the presence of that, I am wrong. No matter what you think of me, no matter what you say, the word is what the word says. The word says you need a body of Christ. You need people together. You need to be close together. It doesn't say right close together because a vine is, is planted apart about three to six feet. But the branches intertwine. You might be standing on your two feet, but you're only standing on your two feet is because of what you're entwined with. That's the only reason why you stand straight is because of what holds you up. It's the vines beside you that hold you up. Amen? Isn't that exciting? I'm excited that I need you. I'm excited that you need me. That means we'll be going forever. That means God's kingdom, it will just keep rolling in. Amen? <laughs> it's just going to roll in. We might have, uh, have every so often some transplants happening, but the fact is the mind, your gar garden's going to keep moving. Amen? Verse 6. No, I was still verse 5. Where was I? There you go. Verse 5. I am the vine. You are the branches. Who abides in me, I abide in him. Bears much fruit, because apart from me, he can do nothing. There's people that are trying to bear fruit with being a root in the bag. And they're trying to do something because they feel the power, they feel the water, they feel the anointing, but for some reason they can't move forward in their life. They say, God, why not? I feel the presence of God. I, I've been soaking in the Holy Ghost. And it's good. I'm not making fun of it. It's good. But the fact is, there's no ability to bear fruit on that vine alone in a bag waiting to be planted somewhere. Actually, it can, actually it's, it's studies show that if it's in there more than three to six hours in the water, it can actually form a disease. 
So when you're on your own too long in the spiritual realm, I don't know what three or six hours is in the spiritual realm, but whatever it may be, <laughs> you're going to create a disease in your life. And it's not going to be healthy for you. Those are facts. Amen? Okay, I'm, I'm preaching better than you're amen right now. Yeah, amen. There you go. Come on, let's have a competition. Let's see who can do better. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, but it's fruit of me, apart from can do nothing. Verse 6, if anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out like a branch that dries up. And they gather it and throw it into the fire, and they are burned. This is also representing to the end time message here. You can, this is a multifold message here. It's also talking about the end time message. It says, the end, in the end time, when you are not bearing fruit and you get dried up, and if there is no connection to Christ Jesus, it is going to flame up. You have no choice. You have to choose to connect to the vine to be able to get the fruit and the life source that you need to live and be successful in your life. Um, this is, um, I thought I had to use Scripture to base it up because I have a lot of stuff to talk about without Scripture because it all connects to Scripture, Okay. But this, I figured this is a really good scripture to go with what I want to talk about. And verse 7 says, If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you will ask whatever you may desire, and it shall be done for you. Allow to get into the word. It says, whatever you desire, it will be done for you. Just listen to this. If you abide me, in me, this Jesus Christ here, and my words abide in you. Okay, that's two part, not just him, now you involved too. Two part. It is a relationship. You can't just have Jesus abide in you without you abiding in the word. Abide in you. You have to choose to get Jesus' sayings in you so that you have the tools and the ammunition to have relationship and to fight your battles and to win. This is a two-way relationship. If you abide in me and, I, and my words abide in you, you will ask anything that you desire, and it will be done for you. And that word desire is it's a word of prayer. Whatever you pray for, whatever need, whatever God's will for you is in those areas. Verse 8. For this is, the, this is um, by this, my Father is glorified, that you may bear much fruit, and you will become my disciples. Oh, this is a powerful verse here. This is such a powerful verse here. You've got to listen to this. Everybody just kind of perk up and just say, okay, what is going on here? <laughs> Let's get the word in here. My... my uh, but this, my Father is glorified, that you may bear much fruit, and you will become my disciples. How do you become disciples of Christ Jesus? Only by bearing fruit. Until then, you're not disciples, you're just born again, saved believers. So we're not just called to be saved, we're called to be disciples. We're called to do the work of Christ, we're called to move forward, we're called to vine out. It's time to vine out. We're called to bear fruit. We're called to bear fruit. We're, we, have these, we, we can't be disciples without fruit. The only way you're a disciple, and the word disciple is when you give something out. It is, discipleship is something that you give because they have a need of what you have. Until then, you don't, you're not a disciple. So as soon as you become an Lone Ranger Christian, you're not a disciple of Christ Jesus. You're just a born-again believer in the family of God, which, praise God, thank you for Jesus for that. But how many of you want to go more and deeper? How many know that Jesus has called us to be his disciples? How many know that? So we need to learn how to bear fruit, and we need to learn how to be the branches on the vine. Amen? We need to get a hold of this so that we can become disciples of Christ Jesus like never before. That we don't become roots in a bag. We don't become waiting to see where we are transplanted, but we root down into a vineyard, which is churches. No matter which way you want to look at it, you can look around it, you can hit yourself across the face a couple times, it still means that, okay? You need to be part of something that roots down because you're part of a cluster of the vine. Because you're part of the cluster of the vine. Now, you look at the vine, Jesus is the vine, so that represents the whole church, through the, all the nations, okay? In that vine, there's many clusters, we do not agree. The clusters that come, cluster, cluster, means that you have to be part of something to hold you off. You have to stand beside something that grabs a hold and you can create clusters in your life. And we have to walk in that. Time to graft in vines means it's time to grab a hold of the people and start engrafting because grapes is one cool thing. You can engraft it. You can actually plant and, and, and you can get it back growing again. Amen? How you do that 
is you take a piece and you soak that for three hours. So yes, you need the presence of the Holy Ghost and you need to soak for three hours. It didn't say for a lifetime, okay? You soak it for three to six hours and then it will root itself, then you plant it. So the fact is, what is the time frame for you in Christ Jesus today? What is that time frame? What is that time frame that you are waiting for you to be planted and rooted down so that you can bear much fruit? Much. It doesn't say little. It says much. I'm going to get into some stuff here. I'm getting excited about this now. <laughs> now, we are born again. Praise God. How many would you say that you accepted Jesus Christ in your life today? Just kind of maybe, if you can even do a TV hand raise, that's fine. Um, whatever you are, good. If you raise, if you're not, if you haven't accepted Jesus, run up here. I'm, you're going to have the best experience of your life. Because when I sang that song, I, I, I felt Jesus. When I was in my office, I'm telling you, I, I can't talk straight in, today before I couldn't do the service. It's just the presence of God is strong. And, and, and the Lord gave me, gave me something, I believe, to be able to go forth to that prophecy so we can war for that prophecy that was released by Pastor Frank Harm, which is my spiritual father. Cluster level. You know what? I'm tired of one or two grapes at a time. It tastes as good, but it doesn't feed me. It doesn't fill me. It doesn't, it, does, it doesn't do the job. It's time that we are matured, that we can cluster level. Amen? So here goes. Number one, planting. This is under planting vines. This is how you plant yourself. Okay? Number one. Now, this is earthly information from real grape wines, but we're going to relate it to spiritual, okay? Because when I was studying the grape wine, when I was actually studying it, I found acknowledge of spiritual stuff happening in there. I said, wow, God, you knew exactly what you're doing when you made this. First of all, grape is the oldest fruit in the world, basically. It's one of the oldest fruits that have been around for the longest time that has been recorded. That shows you something. Durability and strength. Christians, you are the strongest you are well rooted because we've been around for a very, very long time. Amen? We are rooted. We just choose to take it and be rooted. And I'm going to tell you how you can be rooted but not bear fruit today. And I want to teach you how to bear fruit today. Because I see in, in the natural, there's a way that our vine doesn't bear fruit. And there's a way that it does. I'm going to, uh, number one for planting the vine. Construct a trellis. Get something that rises up. You know, a lattice sometimes looks good. I, I had one in our older house. Once stuff was growing in there, beautiful. As soon as stuff was out, ugly. Like, it's <laughs> just like, man, that's a plain piece of board sticking in the middle of nowhere. But the trellis, right? I don't think I'm saying that right, trellis. And, it's just a, and the trellis represents the church. You've got to pl plant yourself somewhere where you can be lifted up and grow upwards. Amen? So the trellis, before planting, grapevines need to train. Grapevines will need to be trained to some sort to support to grow upward. Christians need a place to be trained to grow upwards. This grapevine, you need to plant yourself where you will have the ability to grow up and grow upwards. Amen? What, why do you need to grow on, a, on, on, on this trellis or this church building or this church foundation, why, why do you need something that grows up? It's because when you grow up on a trellis, when you grow up in a place where you are lifted off to the ground, out of the gutter, out of the chicken, and you go up where the eagles are, you go out of that place, what's going to happen? And in, in the natural, the vine gets diseased if it lies on the ground. In the spiritual, we get diseased when we stay on ground level. We get discouraged, we become religious, we become all kinds of things. And so it says, this will cut, this will also cut the risk of disease, is when you grow up. And so when the vine gets grown up in the presence, and they relate it to us, if we grow up, if we choose to go upwards with our vine, if we choose to grab a hold of something where we have a structure, where we can reach up to the heavens, where we have an open door, where we have a place to go all the way, amen? We have lack of disease. How many of you want a lack of less disease? Yeah, I want no risk for disease. And so when you are a vine in a bag, or you are a vine that doesn't have support, when you are planted somewhere by yourself, you're most likely to get more diseases. 
Never mind about the fruit. Just the disease itself to survive and to stay alive. Number two. Most grapes, most grape um, varieties are self-fertile. To be sure, you need to have more than one plant to pollinate. So, they pl when you plant more than one plant together, it, it pollinates each other, it makes it grow. It helps, this word pollination, it, it prevents disease. When you have the actual, what you need, the natural pollination of the vine, it prevents diseases. If we grow together as Christians and we walk together and we are the place that we support each other, we have a less lack of disease and stress and everything else because we are connected now in that place. The only way I can grow as a pastor is if you come and bring friends and, and, and you connect. Only way you can grow as a person is the same thing. You have to connect to the people around you. And if you want to grow stronger and you want to see the people around you, the more you connect, the more blessings, or if you want to call it pollination, you get. Amen? I believe this pollination is a place of blood of Jesus. Because he's the head and we are the body. And every time I bless and pray for somebody, it represents the blood of Jesus. It represents his saving power. It represents salvation. It represents those things that Jesus has done for us. So when I do that, I release the power of Jesus Christ within me. And it now it strengthens the body of Christ. Are you with me? Amen. Number three. My last one for underneath that title, Planted in Vine. There's a lot more, but I just took some out because I knew I, just because I wanted to speak on what I needed to speak on. So it says, select a site with full sun. Don't select a site that doesn't have full sun. Now, I just removed the U and put no in there. You, oh, boy, I feel the anointing all of a hit. Oh, my goodness. The world's going in circles. Praise God. <laughs> select a site full of sun. If you don't have a spot with full of sun, make sure you at least have the morning sun. New things happen in the morning. That's why I say good morning all the time, because I want that morning sun all the time. The morning sun. But the best thing is to plant yourself where God is shining on you, where you are representing Jesus fully, where the light can shine, where there's no darkness, no sin, no nothing in your way, but you're shining. That's the best way to grow. Amen? <laughs> now, once you planted it, you have to know how to take care of yourself. The next, title, next part is taking care of the mind. Number one, taking care of the vine. How many want to take care of the vine? Now, this is a very powerful part. Planting, transplanting is pretty simple, right? It's, as long as you put it in the right place, you put the trellis up, you, that's not a problem, but it's, it's about taking care of you now. How many know born again, that's the biggest miracle ever, but it's one of the easiest miracles out there to do because they meet Jesus for the first time or they experience Jesus' presence. But now, it's, well, how, now that this person gets born again, and accept Jesus in the life. Now, how do we take care of that vine? Amen? And this is what number one is. You might get offended with me with these. In the first couple years, the vine should not be allowed to produce fruit. It needs to be strengthened, its root system, before it can support the extra weight of the fruit. What happens in Christianity is that we think we can do all things right away. Instead of supporting a vision, we try to do things on our own. And the Bible says you cannot bear fruit. You should not be allowed to bear fruit. One reason is you bear fruit, but you are not, shouldn't be allowed to, basically the giftings of God to be represented. It, you, this is talking about natural here, but I'm trying to relate it spiritually. The time limits might be different. But when you look at our natural being, is when we jump ahead of God, what happens? We destroy ourselves, Right? We don't root ourselves down because of this. During this stage, actually, in the vine, they actually grow and they support each other. There are times where, where vines won't bear fruit and the other ones won't bear fruit and they're holding up the ones that are bearing fruit. So sometimes there's this time that I have to hold this man up while he's bearing fruit. I have to twine in so I strengthen his base so that he can bear much fruit. There's times in the beginning of Christianity that you just learn and learn and learn. You're not seeing the fruit that you want to see always, but you are grabbing and you're strengthening your root. And when you strengthen your root, you are with the church or with the people around you, and you entwine yourself and you're strengthening the ones that have much fruit. 
So in their essence, you're still bearing fruit, but you're just supporting the bearing of the fruit while you're learning how to bear the fruit. Amen? And this is called learning, like Jesus did for three years he was on the earth. Uh, it's, uh, people, Paul, for three years, uh, speaking, like, they, at times different, but they go in sections where they were just soaking and learning how to grab a hold of the Word of God. We need to get a hold of this. Sometimes we put people into place soon enough, too, too quick. Sometimes people want to jump ahead too quick. And they have this fruit that is too heavy for the vine. The purpose is true. The purpose is meant for them. But their strength can't hold it. And they are going, it's so tiring. I feel so drained doing the work of God. Uh, they get to that place, right? But what happens when they go into a vine yard that is holding? They become the support of that. I hope I'm making sense with this. It needs to strengthen its uh, fruit system, <laughs> fruit system, <laughs> root system, <laughs> to support itself. And I think that extra weight of the fruit can be dangerous on new Christians, on new people, on new vines. No, it doesn't have to take long. It's even any fruit tree you look at, it takes about three years to bear good fruit, right? So it's not like rocket science here. But what, what a lot of Christianity does, they push people into things that need to bear fruit and they can't bear fruit right away necessarily because they're not strong enough to see the fruit let's say if i've done deliverance and healing ministry for over 20 years now i'm successful at it but now if i brought somebody in that's never done it before and expect them to do the exact same as me it would be too heavy a load for them to do wouldn't you agree it actually would frighten them out and scare them out it would probably just break the branch right in pieces and they'd be dead on the ground and i would have to cast it out anyway right so the fact is, how can I strengthen the vine that comes in? People that need the understanding of deliverance or healing or whatever we do, how do, can we strengthen that vine for the first couple of years so that they can become powerful and bear much fruit? Amen? Number two, pruning is important. Not only would vines run rapid without control, without control. if you don't root yourself, you are going to go rampant. You're going to get out of control. How many times have we seen Christianity get out of control? Anybody? Yeah, to the point where I get a headache. I sometimes wonder, why is that person doing that? But the fact is, because if it doesn't get pruned, it just grows rampant. It just goes anywhere. We become wild in something that doesn't bear fruit. We need to become structured to the point where we can bear fruit. And it says, but the canes will only produce fruit once. That's why it needs to be pruned. So a lot of times, when we bear fruit, oh, we are blessed, man. We got the blessing. We had a great harvest. But if we don't prune that and expect that same vine to produce the same harvest, it won't happen because it cannot produce it again. We are caught with that sometimes as Christians. We don't prune ourselves from the things we need to prune ourselves. It doesn't mean that we're pruning from evil necessarily, but we're cleansing from the harvest. We were thankful, meaning that we don't lose nothing. We gain something because we already took the harvest and we stored the harvest. Now we're pruning it. We have this harvest to feed off while we are producing another level, another race, another place in our life, and they're moving forward. Basically, the fruit, the grapes in the storage means that we won the race. Now we cut down to start a new race. The next race is going to be more powerful, more strength, more fruit than you ever can imagine if you prune. It strengthens the stalk. It strengthens every part of you. And now you can bear much fruit. You thought this was something. Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> you just were kidding yourself. Try pruning. Just try it. All of a sudden you can see mega fruit. Multiplication. Prevailing power. You're going to see it all happen. And so it produces only once. Prune annually when vines are dormant. Means that when you are to a place where you took the harvest off and your vines are just sitting there looking nice. Don't take too much time looking nice. <laughs> you don't look that great, just the vine alone. The fruit looks better on it. When that sits there dormant, it's time to prune down so that you can go to the next level. Remove the things. Do not sit on the old. What I'm talking about here, I'm hoping you're grabbing hold of this. I, what I'm talking about here is I know people that are still trying to live a revival that happened 10 years ago. <laughs> In the meantime, that root is going rampant. And they're trying to do the same thing. It's not working. Cut it off and do something new. 
It might look similar because the fruits are the same. It just might be more abundance if you cut it off. Be chopped up a little bit. It's okay. Remove and grow the fruit. Amen? So, this is where the, where the buds start to swell and the winter damage is, could be careful. So basically, when you prune, you've got to watch and you've got to cover yourself under your anointing, under a, some kind of church. You've got to cover yourself, otherwise you're going to get frostbite in your anointings. I know that I have pruned my life many times before I was a pastor, and I burnt myself many times with frostbite because I didn't take the right covering when I should have. It's so important to be covered when you prune. It's so important to be there, protected, while you're being pruned. Amen? So we need to bear fruit, and we need to be willing to prune if you want lots of fruit. It allows new harvest to be in greater. I'm, just, I'm getting ready for this, because I believe I was pruning this week. A little bit more. I was already pruned, and every so often there's one that goes off, the, off here, and that, you're not doing no good there. You think you're going to be alone? Not a chance. Got to get that back to growing in the vine. Got to grow to the strength of it. Amen? Sometimes you think pruning is all the time. Every year, you should prune 90% of it. But once in a while, you have to prune those branches that are going off the mark. Because it's not going to do any good by itself, one strand out that way. It's not going to bear any grapes. It's only going to bear grapes on the trellis. It's going to bear grapes where you are connected and twined in with the body of Christ. This is truth, guys. There's a reason why Jesus uses analogies. Would you not agree? <laughs> and then, so, number three. Don't be afraid to remove at least 90% of your previous season's growth. 90%. Why 90%? Well, my speculation is 10% is God's. No, I don't know. Um, but 90% is giving up every little bit that you ever did. It's like saying, God, I was successful there, and I choose to prune down and say, God, lead me again and see greater fruit than I ever have seen. Greater anointings, greater healings, greater deliverances, greater levels, God. I choose to remove because I have the blessing of that harvest. It's not that I'm forgetting about it. It's not that I'm denying it because I have the harvest already. I'm enjoying the fruit thereof. And now I'm getting ready for the next level so that I never lack in my storage house with grapes. Amen? It says, don't be scared to do that every growth. This will ensure a higher quality pr production or product. Remember, the more you prune, the more grapes you will have. The more you get rid of self, the more you get rid of your ideas, the more you get rid of that. Because what happens when God blesses you, you create ideas on the blessings. Wouldn't you agree? You create saying, God, this did work for me. <laughs> I, 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 you create ideas, don't you? But if you prune those, your own ideas out of what God's prophetic illustrations were and his prophetic blessings, don't, as soon as you have your own ideas, you have to choose to get God's ideas again. Because every time God blesses you, every time there's a harvest of great grapes, every time there's clusters level, there's idea levels. We've got to stay connected with God's idea, and that's why we have to prune so it's not about us, but it's about God being the vine and us being the branches. Amen? And so I say, how many of you are willing to prune more to get more? I'm learning. What about you? I'm grabbing hold of something here. Maybe you heard this before, but I, I'm just relating this to our life. And I'm looking at it and saying, God, I can change things. I can change things in my life. I can prune more, God. Because I don't want more of you, God. I want more of your, your cluster level. I want more of everything you have for me. I want more deliverance. I want more freedom. I want more healing. God, I, I'm going to prune. I'm going to I'm gonna take my own ideas about my healing out of my, my system. I created ideas because of what happened 10 years ago. Or five years ago. Two years, I, I created my ideas what healing should look like. I, uh, Lord, I'm going to prune that so I can see your ideas for my healing. So I can see your cluster level for me. So that I don't have an idea of a system, but I have an idea of who you are in my life. 
Yes, I want the structure of the garden, but I don't want my own idea in the garden. I want to grow upwards in the garden, and I want to bear fruit with new vine every year and the more. And we had a vine on our yard. I don't even know if it was grape or whatever it was, but every year it got bigger and fluffier, and the less I saw the trellis, the better it was. Because the trellis didn't look good. I don't like trellis. Ugh. But when the flower's on there, it's beautiful. This is the same thing with grapes. The more, all of a sudden, you are totally covered in God's presence and His blessings and His harvest and His cluster level if we just choose to prune. Pruning is not about evil. Pruning is about getting rid of something that already has been harvested and get a new seed in for a new harvest. It is not about evil always. People think, well, I got to prune myself. I did something wrong again. No, you didn't. only reason you're pruning is because you were blessed. The only reason why there's pruning involved is because you got a cluster. <laughs> Amen? Sometimes you say, oh boy, I did something bad. Yeah, get the infection part off. I'm not, not saying that. But most times we should prune is because we want to move forward in God, not because we did something so bad. We want to huh, get more. More grapes, God. More cluster. I want a cluster level. What about you? Number four. In the first year, cut back except for a few little harvests. For in the first year, let them have a couple so they feel good about themselves. <laughs> Cut back, let two or three buds stand on a branch. They got to feel good. They got to feel, oh, I got some fruit. We, we all have to feel that, don't we? We have to feel that God's alive. So in the first year, cut back so there's a few and select a couple of strong canes and cut back the rest. Make sure the remaining canes are fastened to the support. If you want to walk and you want to take care of yourself, you've got to fasten yourself to the support, which is Christ Jesus. You've got to fasten yourself to the trellis, which is the body of Christ, so that you can support. If me and Corey would stand together here, I, 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 like let's say if I'm weak, I would be stronger. Just stand up for a minute. If, if I, I would be stronger if I just stand like this. He might get weaker to a point, but I would get stronger, right? And we would grow together. We would entwine. I won't do that. But... <laughs> <laughs> and we would start hugging, and, and, and we, the more, more we're together, the stronger we are. <laughs> now, that's a bad picture, maybe, but it's a good picture, okay? <laughs> Just imagine my, okay, we'll use a better example, because my wife and I, everybody can imagine that a little better than my Corey and myself. But if I have two body hugs face to face, we protect the organs of who we are. When we grow together, we protect the things that could hurt us the most and the quickest. Amen? So we've got to walk and we've got to twine together and we've got to be strong together and we've got to fasten ourselves to our support. If you don't have support, you won't last. You just won't last. You've got to have support. So, what is the end result of this? Cluster level equals new wine. New wine. How many want new wine? Jesus talks about new wine all the time. I'm trying to pronounce that right. Wine, wine, wine. Pronounce. <laughs> now we get the flow of the riches of his anointing. We get to harvest the grapes and we get to experience his presence to the highest level. We get new wine. One thing we have to be aware about grapes, I have uh, learned this. I've been studying it and it might not, might not do to all grapes, but what I've been studying anyway is that if you take grapes off before they're ripe, they don't ripen by themselves. So the fact is, there's too many Christians that want their harvest too quick and take off their grapes before they're ready. And they are sour. So what, sometimes you have something to give and it is sour because you're giving it me green when I need it red. I need it luscious and you're giving it to me sour. There's people today, we've got to be aware of ourselves, that we don't give out to here, take some healing and this guy, oh! That's sour. I don't want it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's not ready to give. Now, well, we'll just plant it there and put it aside. It's not going to do any good. It has to come out of the plant ripe, and you've got to be ready to give. And you, so you can't give before it's time. You've got to give when the harvest is ripe. How many have been around people or things and, and, and services or wherever where you just feel and say, wow, that person, I mean, it, it's not bad, but I just feel awkward, <laughs> that person praying for me like that. Have you been feeling that like false hands been laid on or something like that? Sometimes it's simply because the grape wasn't ripe. 
So what happens to these people, they're so excited, they become rampant a lot of times. And what happens is they get so excited, they keep giving stuff out that is not ready to give out. And they become a place of an addiction of giving out sour grapes. I hate sour fruit. I can't even handle cold fruit. I like the, I like the sun fruit. Like you put grapes in the fridge, um, that don't work. Put them on the counter for about two hours, then I'll eat them. No cold at all in it. Maybe even put it on the sun, that'd be great, hey? Jesus, why don't you just shine on my grapes? That sounds terrible. <laughs> Warm me up, God. Heat me up. So you can't ripen without the vine. See, the thing is that you can't give if you remove yourself from the vine, which is the source of Christ Jesus. You can't be ripened that way. Isn't that great? It's great that we can just know this and say, God, I'm going to wait till I'm ripe. <laughs> I'm going to wait till my cluster is ready to take, then I'm going to enjoy the cluster. Amen? My last verse of the day. You guys still, still doing fine? We're going to have some major deliverance healing because of this. We're going to heal. We're going to see, we're going to see things happening today. In Revelation 14, 18. He's preferring to the end times, I believe, here and the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ and so forth. Um, it says, And another angel came from the altar, having authority over the fire. So the fire is relating the place where the shaft is going into, okay? The stuff that didn't survive. The stuff that didn't bear fruit. The stuff that didn't carry the clusters, okay? The fire. And he called without a cry loud. Sorry. And he called with a, a loud cry to the one with a sharp stickle. And a stickle is a place what they use to cut the grapevines down, okay? They're just cutting it. It's the presence of removing. It's a stickle. is a place of pruning. How many know a stickle is not a good thing always? Uh, when you get pruned, you get chop, chop, chop. It sometimes just doesn't feel good. You feel offended. You feel like you were taken down. You feel like, why me, God? And the only reason why we feel that is because we don't understand pruning. Why did I get chopped again, God? I was doing so good. I had so much fruit. He says, because I want you to bear more fruit. Anyway, that's what a stickle is. I could preach on the words. I think I'm pronouncing it right. S-I-C-K-L-E. Sickle. Sickle. Sick? Oh. Well, it's like sick in there. I don't think. Well, maybe you feel sick when you do it. Anyway. It's saying, thirst. Thrust, sorry. <laughs> Thrust in your sharp sickle <laughs> and gather the grape clusters of the vine of the earth because the grapes are ripe. You know, we need to start gathering the grapes because they're ripe. I believe that we've gone through a lot of pruning, and I believe there's cluster level anointing come there because I believe that prophecy that came from that person, that Pastor Frank Harms, I believe that prophecy came for a reason, is because the Spirit of God knew that we've been pruning. We've been pruning. And that goes well with the word that's been coming that things are going to get easier for us. Then you remember those words? We are past that point of, of a weak branch, and we're to the point of being strong. And now that we understand pruning, we're going to welcome the pruning instead of run away and become rampant. Amen? Okay, Lord, go ahead, chop me. <laughs> chop it lower. Get it down. Amen?